All right, welcome into the Vegas Squares podcast. Myself and Anthony Token Tony are sitting in studio in our brand new studio. Uh, we moved a little bit west uh, of where we were before. Uh, I like the new studio; it's pretty good. No, it's actually east. Is it east? Yeah, yeah. I'm all turned around. That, that, that's west. You're right. That is west. We moved east. Moving on up to the east side to eleven by fourteen in the sky. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's uh, let's dive in because uh, we've got some. I found these kind of interesting, and I wanted to talk about them, and let's kind of see how this goes. Uh, Bet DSI, a European bookmaker, uh, an offshore bookmaker for us, um, has some rookie props that I was kind of inclined to talk about. I'm kind of interested in looking at these, and uh, I wanted to get your take on it, and we'll kind of discuss them and see how this goes, and get our thoughts on on a couple of different different situations. Let's uh, let's look at it. First one. Uh, Anthony, I'm going to ask you this. Uh, you know, the, the under looks like a, a solid favorite because of the situations, but mm-hmm. um, the total rookie quarterbacks, the total number of rookie quarterbacks who start week one of the 2018 regular season, the over under, the over under is set at one and a half, with the over being plus 150, under being minus 180. Yes, um, and this spot, week one. Of this regular season, I like the under. E- e- even paying that much juice, I like uh, the the only other quarterback I would say that could start besides more, most likely Allen would be for sure a week one starter. I'm guessing um, maybe Baker, but I, I don't see that happening. Um, I think Rosen is possibly the second one that could start. In Arizona. Yeah, I mean, you look at every situation. I mean, let's take it down the line. Baker Mayfield drafted number one. Tyrod Taylor is the projected starter there. Hugh Jackson has already come out and named him effectively the pre-season, the pre-camp starter. You know, he won't commit to anything because they'll always say, you know, hey, look, anything can happen. Uh, I mean, look with Deshaun Kaiser last year. You know, Deshaun Kaiser won the job, and he was a second-round pick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the odds on him starting are pretty small, but you know, I, you know, you never know with Cleveland. Yeah, uh, I would lean to say that he's not going to be on the field week one. The second quarterback taken was Darnold to the Jets. He actually, to me, seems like if he progresses through camp the best, I actually believe he could get on the field. Considering you know, Josh McCown is Josh McCown. Let's let's not sugarcoat yeah. him and Teddy Bridgewater. Hmm. While I like the guy, I mean, if 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 you believe the future is now, you you take Darnold and you put him in there. So yeah. I think Darnold has a really good shot at at getting on the field in Week One. So that gives me one quarterback, and that's kind of a fifty fifty to me. Mm-hmm. Um, your third quarterback is Allen. They may take a shot with that, considering they traded up to get him. They may want to hone his skills a little bit. The new regime's got a a stopgap in place with AJ McCarron's two year contract. Um, AJ's got, uh, you know, this is his prove it. These two years are his prove it. He sat behind Dalton for what, four or five years. And, uh, even if his time does not continue in Buffalo, he's taking these at least one year, potentially a year and a half to two to get himself a contract either in Buffalo or with another, another organization. So, uh, I'm going to rule that AJ wins that battle because I don't think Josh Allen is pro ready completely at this point. Uh, who was the next one? Uh, Josh Rosen. I believe you're 100 percent accurate that uh, that you know Sam Bradford's a walking medical, you know, anomaly. Yeah. Um, I don't think Rosen gets on there uh, on the field week one, but I do think at some point in this first season he will be the first quarterback, more than likely, to uh, to see the field, unless Sam Darnold just tears it apart. Flacco is going to get a year, so I think you're right. And I don't think anybody who's drafted second round or more is going to be seeing the field. Like Mason Rudolph, Ben Roethlisberger is going to be on that field yeah. as long as he's healthy. So I don't see anybody else. Danny Etling, the seventh round pick for the New England Patriots, is not making, you know, it's not getting onto the field. So no. um, but under is a solid play unless some crazy things happen uh, over the next four months, which I don't see. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take the juice uh, as well and lay the under. Yeah. So you think the better value is taking the 
Yeah, that was my long-winded version of saying the under, I think, yeah. is good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you want a good, realistic depth in that betting uh, outlook, and I, I think that's perfect. I mean, I mean, it could almost be a coin flip come week one. But I, I like the under even laying that much juice. So Right. Now, that leads me to the next prop bet, which is the rookie quarterback who will start first. This isn't the over-under. This is There's, there's different numerical odds uh, of who will start first. The overwhelming – well, not overwhelming. The favorite is Josh Allen at plus 150, Baker Mayfield plus 250, Josh Rosen 450, Sam Darnold 750. Lamar Jackson twelve to one, and the field is plus three ten, which the field includes what uh, Mason Rudolph and a yeah. couple of that Kyle Lafayette for the Giants, yeah, which I don't see him making it either. So uh, the field's three uh, plus three ten. So uh, of of those quarterbacks like that we just talked about, and those values, where do you see the the most uh, value as far as uh, taking one of those guys to to be the first one to start? Um, in my mind, it's definitely Rosen. I think nine to two odds is definitely well above the that I would think for him to start first between everybody that was drafted. <clears throat> and uh yeah, I, I I just like plus four fifty in that spot for sure. Yeah, um, it's, de- it's definitely a good I, spot. I think Stan Bradford's a walking Cast. That's so. why he gets the. Uh, that's why he he feels to me like value right there at 450 because of the fact that mm-hmm. Mike Glennon is no good and Sam Bradford <laughs> basically has an ambulance that just drives right behind him. <laughs> uh, I like Rosen. You'd pro- I'd probably sprinkle a little bit on that, but like I said with Sam Darnold, if, I think if he has a great camp, the Jets and especially Todd Bowles because Todd Bowles has got to be on the hot seat at this point. Mm-hmm. If if they believe Darnold gets through this camp and that's their guy because that's the guy he drafted. I could see him, like I said, starting the first game or, you know, game two if, you know, anything can happen. Because their first game is against the Lions on Monday night. I mean, no disrespect to your Detroit Lions, but yeah. that may be a game where, you know, putting Darnold in Monday night might not be the smartest move. But, you know, week two, might mm-hmm. you know, you might you might be able to see Darnold at that point. Yeah. Um, I think Darnold at 750 is a good, a good value as well, too. The field, to me, seems like a waste. Yeah. Josh Allen makes sense, but he's just it's just not enough value right there no. with one fifty. Yeah, it's same with way Baker too Mayfield. Weak. Yeah. And I don't think Baker Mayfield will will get there. So uh and Lamar Jackson, I think Flacco like I said Flacco's got a you know I did say a year before, but I, if he struggles through eight weeks, the fans are gonna be calling for his head. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, I think I think another quarterback will get on the field before that. So you you, you could even Maybe even see the Ravens, uh, I mean, if he starts like crap, just trying to get rid of him for any little value that they can. Whether it be like even a seventh-round pick or just somebody to take his contract the rest of the year or something. Right. So you have um, each individual quarterback that we just talked about has their has a uh, an individual odds – um, all five of them that, you know, will they start any game during the 2018 uh, regular season? Uh, start with Baker. He has the he has the second highest juiced yes at minus 400. Um, I really believe with what the Browns did this offseason, getting the weapons that they got, I think Tyrod Taylor, there's no reason to, for him to have a bad season at this point. If he can just play competent football, they're actually a halfway decent team. That you may not need to see Taylor, you know, may not excuse me, you may not need to see uh, Mayfield. But as I say that, the Browns are the Browns, and you know somehow Tyrod's they're gonna fuck up Tyrod. Yeah. And whether it's an injury because he can get injured, he is injury prone. I'm gonna lay the yes at 400, saying that Mayfield gets on the field in a starting role at some point this season. Yeah, whether it be for one drive or something, just f- for the fan's sake or something. Or Yeah, if they're 0-15 or if they start out the gate 0-6, I mean, you might as well let Baker take his shots, you know? Yeah. Um, Darnold is 350, I think. Uh, I think I'm going to lay the yes on that one as well. Yeah, absolutely. Josh Allen minus 500. 
I, I don't see a value in that one. It's not a value. No, I would actually say the value might be the no plus 380. Yeah. Because I think A.J. McCarron, that team made the playoffs last year. If A.J. McCarron could just come in and do exactly what, you know, Tyrod did or better, I don't see Allen, you know, seeing the field at that point. Um, Josh Rosen's minus 400, and that's basically like we've been talking about this whole time. That's a Bradford injury. Yeah. That opens the door. Bradford injury or maybe he starts horrible the first couple of weeks and then. Right, and and even though it's a lot of juice at minus four hundred, it's you, you, uh, you don't you don't bet huge with that. You just bet a little bit, you know, bet a layup. Yeah, it should be a layup that Rosen gets on the gets on the field, especially with a new coach who just drafted him ten. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And then you have Lamar Jackson, who actually is plus money for the yes, yes. and minus two forty for the no, plus two hundred for the yes. And, and that pick, I like uh, the yes. I. I mean, Flacco getting hurt would definitely be a way for him to sneak in, or maybe they have a rough start. And I mean, they started off this past season very rough, so. Yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right, and Joe Flacco can definitely get injured as well. Uh, the question is, is, if Joe Flacco gets injured and the team's not really playoff contending, do they just take – I think their backup might still be Ryan Mallett. I'm not sure. Uh, I believe you're right on that. Would they even put Lamar Jackson in, you know, without any preparation and start him? I think Lamar, I think the no's a bet here, but I don't think I'd bet anything at this point. I mean, I know the fans will be calling for one. Yeah, I think John Harbaugh's job is safe enough that he doesn't have to force Lamar Jackson into starting action. Does that make sense? Fair enough. So that's where my, my thought process is on that sp- on that specific one. Actually, it's uh, RG3. Oh, that's right. RG3 is in there. That's right. I forgot. Yeah. So and, that's... and uh, Woodrum. Who? Uh, Josh Woodrum. Yeah, I don't know who that is. But my, my sense is that Flacco gets hurt. RG3 is going to go in before Lamar Jackson. So Yeah. Um, let's move to the running backs. Let's switch gears, no pun intended. And the first running back off the board was Saquon Barkley. Uh, he was drafted number two by the Giants. Mm-hmm. And the prop I see here is, will Saquon Barkley rush for 1,000 yards? During the 2018-19 regular season, the yes minus 130, the no is uh, even money. Or, yeah, uh, plus 100, actually. Yeah, 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 so even money. Yeah, even money. Yeah, because plus 100 is even money. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. It tripped me up for a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, usually you, you just see even or whatnot, so yeah. um, same concept, though. I expect Barkley to have an impact. Barkley, to me, just reminds me of Reggie Bush 2.0. Oh, okay. A guy who can run and receive, but won't do either exceptionally well in the yes. NFL. He was great in college. Middle of the road. On the field offensive player, kind of. I mean, I could see 800 each. Playmaker. You know, 800 yards each, you know, receiving and rushing, which is great. 1,600 yards from oh, scrimmage is yeah. a fantastic. But I'm going to take the no at even money for rushing for 1,000 yards, especially in that division. The Redskins got better on defense. The Eagles are really good on defense and got better. And the Cowboys have a pretty good defensive front when, you know, Demarcus Lawrence, et cetera. That division, six times a year, you're going to be facing top defenses. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the other ten games, you're going to probably face a few defenses in the, you know, that are upper echelon. And you're a rookie. And, you know, the thing is, is if, if Eli Manning struggles out the gate, they're going to key on you, put eight in the box, and make you beat them. So I can see Saquon Barkley's career being, you know, a generally mild Reggie Bush type. And I, and like I said, it's not a bad career if you're a career, you know, if your career numbers, you know, per season are eight, eight hundred, you know, eight hundred yards each way, rushing and receiving. That's not bad, sixteen hundred yards from scrimmage. But for this prop specifically, I'm going to take the no. I would lean towards the no as well. The Giants during the draft and during the offseason seems to me like they haven't beefed up their offensive line enough to boost the production out of a running back. Well, as, I mean, to, Solder. To, to make a 1,000 yard rusher. Right. Solder is good for protecting the blind side. And he's probably a good run blocker, but I don't think they did enough, like you said, to be able to produce a 1,000 yard back. So yeah, I would say you're probably right on that. So then let's look at let's look at uh rushing yards for uh three different running backs and who will have the most rushing yards. Saquon Barkley is the favorite at minus one ten and he's going up against Rashad Penny of the Seahawks plus one fifty 
and Sony Michelle of the Patriots plus three twenty five. My pick on this, without a doubt, I, I would absolutely take the longer shot of, of those three. I would take Sonny Michelle. And yeah, I would agree with you on that one. I mean, the value right there with Sonny Michelle because yeah. they do have James White, they do have Burkhead, but I really believe, I uh, you know, as much as he is a Deion Lewis type, I really believe that his build, they want a guy who is going to be able to grind out yards. Mm-hmm. I think they miss LeGarrette Blunt more than they know, or more than you know people know. Yeah. Um, the easy pick would be Rashad Penny because there is absolutely nothing in the stable at in Seattle. Yeah. Thomas Rawls is is terrible. Eddie Lacy's terrible, and you know Russell Wilson can't keep being your leading rusher at this point. No. Um, in my mind, in my mind that uh, Penny does get a decent amount of yards. In my mind, out of these three, he gets the third amount. I, I think you Barkley. Think Penny goes for the least. Yeah, I think Barkley and Michelle are. Uh, yeah, Sonny and Michelle have more than him. I, I Seahawks off of offensive line is just pure garbage. He's either going to get beat down, fumble a lot, little stuff like that. I mean, I, I see him being more of a blocking back than a running back right now to project a. Russell Wilson. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, all right, so let's look at the most receiving yards, and that's a, that's the competition between DJ Moore, who went to Carolina, and Calvin Ridley, who went to Atlanta. DJ Moore is the favorite at minus 140, Calvin Ridley plus 110. I know you and I both really, really like Calvin Ridley, mm-hmm. but I lean DJ Moore in this spot just given that there's not a lot of receiving core in – Carolina. Uh, Carolina, you know, Funches is the number one guy, and not that he's a bad receiver, mm-hmm. but I think, you know, it's a it's it's a run heavy offense. But I think that I think that DJ Moore is going to find a really good spot to probably get about seven or eight hundred yards, and I think Calvin Ridley as the third option in Atlanta, unless somehow there's enough balls to go around, uh, you know, it will fall in the five to six hundred range. Not a bad rookie season, just not going to beat DJ Moore in my opinion as no, far as yeah. most yards. Yeah, I think Moore has more receptions, much more yards. I see him being closer to right around maybe eight hundred a thousand yard receiver or something around there. Right. So laying the one forty is probably the in my opinion the a, you know, good bet. bet. Yeah, because yeah, I mean being the third option versus being the second option and even maybe the first option because Funches can definitely get hurt from time to time. Absolutely, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so there's some definitely if you have an account with BetDSI or I'm sure William Hill or some of the LV sports book. They'll come out with some props. Yeah, they'll come up with some props here. So um, those are our thoughts on some rookie props. Uh, We appreciate you tuning in, and we will see you next time.